Some gamers really push it to the limits sometimes, and that's awesome. Number 10, let me solo her. This is the obvious one. Let me solo her was basically like the year of 2022 personified. It was True. all Elden Ring and all let me solo her. As you probably remember, Elden Ring was the biggest game of 2022. It broke into the mainstream. Everybody was playing this freaking game and everybody was struggling with it because it's incredibly challenging, specifically the boss Melania. Uh, that's actually true and so underrated in my opinion. Dark Souls was a known and very successful franchise, but Elder, Elden Ring just pushed it, pushed it to the absolute limit, honestly. She's legendary for a reason, uh, the Scarlet Rot, her, her obnoxious attacks with brutally small windows. Uh, she was really, really tough, a legendary From Software boss for sure, but Let Me Solo Her made it a little better. This was just one person out there waiting to be summoned by any player that needed help, uh, and they apparently helped thousands of and thousands of people in defeating this boss. All they really wanted was for you to summon them, and then you sit back and let them take care of it, and they would do it with a jar on their head and totally naked. It's legendary stuff because they also mastered the art of defeating this boss. They could crush it. So if you were struggling and you got lucky and maybe you summoned Let Crush it is not exactly the right word I would use. If you have seen this, you know that this guy knows exactly which pattern she is going to use at any point. And he just pretty much three shots her, honestly. You know, it, it's as impressive as it can be because the, the guy probably can predict what pattern she uses before she even uses it. It's really impressive. Let me solo her. You probably know about them like an absolute legend just for this alone, just like a helping, helpful person in the gaming community. It's what we need. They were also an inspiration after helping thousands and thousands of people defeat her. We've also seen other people pop up and help thousands of people like Let Me Solo Them, the character mm. or real player uh, who has been summoned by thousands to help them beat the final boss or bosses of Elden Ring. It's just an inspiration, really. You don't have to know anything. Admittedly, how do you feel about, you know, someone playing something like, you know, a Dark Souls game and then asking for other people's assistance? Because the point of Dark Souls is you're supposed to lose. You're supposed to try and beat the boss 20 times, you know, because you're not smart enough to figure out that the way you're supposed to actually play Dark Souls is just uh, go into the boss room, go near to the boss, not try to hit it. And then just roll, roll, roll until you understand the pattern and understand that in, in basic form, you know, pretty much there's only three, no, four types of attacks, I would say, that every boss in this game uses. So there's the charge pattern that, you know, a boss can use if you're too far away, uh, away from it for too much of an extended of uh, period of time, the basic attacks. And then there's, you know, a crushing, slamming attack if you if it's big and you get under it. And, well, th then it's just some kind of random small things that it can do. Or sometimes it does, you know, some cheap, che cheap, cheesy tactics. And that's pretty much it. And then it transforms. And then you have to learn it all over again. I mean, if you understand this, Dark Souls becomes suddenly a much, much easier game. But everyone just goes in, swords are blazing, and then they're like, wow, bosses deal damage. Who would have expected? Yeah. Thing about them or what their angle really is other than that they're here to help and that they are immensely appreciated. You know, so many multiplayer games or games where you can summon people, they just come in and they either suck or they're just trying to purposely mess up your shit. But Let Me Solo Her went the complete opposite and became like a civic helpful good samaritan hopefully the bat signal will light once again with the uh shadows of the air tree uh elden ring dlc and they'll be Ooh. back but we'll just have to wait and see next over at number nine uh if you played gta online any time before march of 2023 you know that those long loading times absolutely suck uh the reason they don't anymore is because of a true man when gta online came out I played it, man. I kind of liked it. You know what my, you know what was my hobby? You know what was my hobby? My favorite thing to do in GTA Online was join the deathmatch. What, what is it called? A deathmatch game or something like that? In any case, you join it, and my favorite thing was this. I would peek around corners and lure people to try and chase me. 
I would be annoying and make them chase me. And you know what I would do? So this is a lot of, uh, so this is an interaction a lot of people don't actually know in GTA. If you're running, if you're sprinting and you're holding a grenade, one tap of the left, left mouse button, you know what it does? It removes the pin and just drops it. It's almost an invisible animation, <laughs> you could say. And you can probably guess what I did when people were chasing me. Yeah, yeah. You're annoying, you're throwing grenades at them. Usually it doesn't work out because it's actually really hard to land a grenade. If a, uh, if a person is not like, you know, standing still or something like that. It's usually kind of uh, kind kind of hard to do that. And people get really annoyed. So they try to kill you. They try to chase you. And you're sprinting away. So you sprint around the corner, release the pin, drop it. Wait, a, wait behind the corner. And you know what happens? They run, and suddenly you're just there, watching at them, and they're like, ah, yes, and bam. Man, that was so enjoy. I loved doing it. I, I did that for multiple days until I got tired of it. It was pretty hard to pull off, but man, is it funny. Fan-made patch that Rockstar actually took and made a real official patch. This was done by GitHub user Toster CX or T0ST. Uh, without getting too into the weeds, there were some issues with some CPU bottlenecking, and after a fix, it had reduced GTA Online loading times by up to like 70%. Nice. That's a crazy number. And along with that, they were even awarded $10,000 cash as Good. part of Rockstar's bug bounty program that they have. They essentially put out a call for people to find difficult bugs and fix them. Rockstar realized how impressive this specific user's mod was, and then they put out this statement, and I quote, after a thorough investigation, we can confirm that player Tost did, in fact, reveal an aspect of the game code related to load times for the PC version of GTA Online that could be improved. As a result of these investigations, we have made some changes that will be implemented in a forthcoming title update. How cool is that? Nice. A player took it into Big. their own hands to make their experience a more enjoyable one, and they got- Yeah, like, come on, the loading times at the start of this game for online were abysmal. Some Rockstar recognition and also did a huge solid for all of their fellow GTA Online players, which is like, you know, probably millions. They help millions of people. We're f big fans of modders here at Game Ranks. We don't do too many mods ourselves or even mod our games as much as we used to, but we still appreciate a good old classic mod success story. They make us very happy. Next over at number eight, we gotta talk about Elite Dangerous, an incredibly deep space simulation game with really good communities around it, uh, and specifically, one group of- I should play this. Yeah, I have heard good things about it. A lot of good things. Dedicated players known as the- e Admittedly, if you know what you're doing, if you're, if you're using a guide, I also understand that Elite Dangerous is not that fun because, you know, at the at the t tip of the top of the end of the game it's 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 kind of a cookie cutter thing as much as i understand it at least it was a couple of years ago so you know if you're gonna play this game you probably shouldn't use a guide i guess east india company gaming in the early days of the coronavirus pandemic when lockdowns were in full force some people were out of jobs some people were stuck at home and just played video games a lot of people dumped into and Blizzard was claiming that that's the reason why they uh, why they did not see a huge increase in, you know, sales and uh, player counts. While every other gaming company was like, this is amazing! I wish this never ends! And Blizzard was saying, no, 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 this actually hurts gaming. Yeah, I know, we're kind of the only company that's not seeing a, per a substantial boost in player numbers. But, you know, it's, it's really, it's, trust us, boys to Elite Dangerous, looking for an escape, but the game can be pretty challenging. Now, where the East India Company Gaming Group came in, they essentially would just be out there for players to help. As Eurogamer noted specifically with the grind of engineer-based ship improvements, but they brought all good resources oh. to players, where they would usually charge a fee for that, they had decided to waive that fee in, uh, you know, the spirit of giving and taking care of one another. It was something that we saw during the lockdowns as much as people were isolated in some instances, <laughs> people kind of came together and helped each other in, in whatever. Bro, I, bro, in a house, still wearing it. You, you gotta be, 
Dude, so, some of these people deserve what they got, okay? The, peop the people who were doing the blanket thing, you know, and you putting a blanket on themselves and then hugging each other, bro. You, you need some Jesus. Ever ways they could, and it happened in the gaming world, too. Just this group of space players flying around, helping other people out, getting them the resources they need, making the game a little bit more accessible, and ultimately getting more people into Elite Dangerous, a great game, but also just helping people that were already in that game world. You know, maybe they smiled, maybe they had a little bit of a better time. The quote that Eurogamer got from them is, it only takes small things to show we are a community. And sometimes those small gestures, you know, just small handouts are really appreciated and make someone's day. So shout out to them. True. Unless it's uh, the Grand Exchange in RuneScape where you're giving giving a bot 50k. Next over at number 7, uh, Fortnite player and streamer Bush Camp Dad managed to hit the Unreal ranking in Fortnite by camping. Just camping. That's it. This dude would hide in the bush and just hug the circle, as their name implies. Uh, and I have that's heard not about to say this that dude. He's never gotten a kill. Sure, he has. But most of his time was spent just camping. When the rank actually popped, he came in fifth place. And with that ranking, he now sits in the top 30,000 players, which is really funny because, wow. you know, the bulk of those players actually did their due diligence and uh, probably kicked ass and got a ton of those dubs and just really worked hard at winning. But not Bush Camp Dad, who uh, is obviously more about working smarter than working harder. And we're all about that. I 100% would absolutely rubber band my analog sticks on Yo, he's playing on a controller even, oh my lord. My Xbox 360 controller to rank up my guy in Rainbow Six Vegas so I could get a cool helmet or a gun or whatever. It's about sometimes working smart, not working hard. And Bush Camp Dad did that. He proved that to all of us. Sometimes, you know, we take this gaming stuff so seriously. Sometimes he can just screw around. And you know what? It made us chuckle. It probably made a lot of other people chuckle. So we really appreciate them for that. Now, next over at number six, this one is pretty intense because it's EVE Online and I am not well versed Ooh. in this series, but it is a massive. I mean, EVE Online is something else, okay? This, dude, we should, we should check out some stories of EVE Online because the stories of EVE Online are just legendary. No other game even comes close to this. The average story of EVE Online is, oh yeah, we sieged these guys for three months. Three months? What? 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 That's your that, that's your average that's your average thing to do sieging someone for a month. Yeah, not great. Space sim game where people basically live second lives in it. People get together, command entire ships, run companies and businesses True. in these games. And sometimes big wars will break out, huge things will happen, drama will go down, real world money sometimes. Dude, people will infiltrate some of these big corporations. The guilds are called corporations in EVE. And they will try their best to social, uh, social engineer themselves uh, to the top of the ladder to the top of everything in the in that in that corporation and then they will just steal everything in the in the bank and that's a legitimate way to play the game it's absolutely glorious this is in play and uh, a great example of that was this big assassination essentially it was 10 months of somebody deceiving somebody else uh, 10 months of one person infiltrating a ship company and becoming that is not the only story where this happens, okay? The reason I don't play Eve. The reason why I said that is because it's not exactly not commonplace for people to at least attempt it. It is the craziest thing ever. Like one of the top commanders, only two after 10 months, uh, when the leader has their back turned, they stab him in the back, they kill him. And apparently it was a whole coordinated plan of attack codenamed Nicole and a bunch of players rushed in and yeah 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 because he was actually a part of a uh, of different corporation yo you again e you can't make these things up in e well you can make these things up in e but they happen that's the best part no other game has stories like eve not only did they kill an important leader but they also made off with 30 billion isk which is the in game yep yep Yep. Again, well, that's the, this, uh, as much as I understand, this is the main point why people do it. Because corporations, if it's a big corporation, you have a lot of money in that shit, okay? 
get, get, getting to steal all of it from a corporation is good because you're probably not infiltrating a small corporation. So essentially, if you want to make money in this game, this is a legitimate way to do it because the reality is very, very, very simple. <laughs> You're not gonna farm 30 billion isk probably by doing anything, uh, any solo, solo activity. Maybe you can, I'm not actually sure, but I'm pretty sure you can't actually. So, you know, if you want to farm, uh, farm money in this game, that's how you do it. You infiltrate a corporation and then just r rank, uh, r rank up in the lad uh, ladder of the organization until you can take everything from the bank account. It is what it is. Game currency, which according to PC Gamer was worth almost 17,000 US dollars. Now there was actually like kind of like a contract. The original fee for this job was apparently a lot more, but still this just takes dedication. And that's also just huge drama because these are people uh, why why is the original contract for that bigger than you know what he got by the way because this effectively destroys a corporation uh, one of the reasons why you have corporations in EVE online is because well if a VOD actually breaks out the corporation is going to replenish a uh, cost for ships and things like that so you're going to be fine but if a corporation has no longer any money it effectively can't win a war so unless unless they have some kind of backers or something like that they're not winning any war that someone's starting for you so at the end of the day it's just a uh, fight over territory honestly to a certain degree and yeah that's what it does okay that 30 billion probably not a not and you know that's why someone offers more than 30 billion that they actually get crazy interacting with each other getting to know each other in this game world living out their space lives in the galaxy or whatever of eve the assassin was known as Aranus, and they are now a legend and it makes for an incredible story if you want to read up on the whole thing we'll link a couple of resources in the description down below because eve is filled with incredible massive things that happen in their game worlds uh that you know sometimes you don't even hear about Next over at number five, uh, you remember that one time maybe you were playing Dark Souls or Sekiro or whatever, and you beat one boss without somehow taking a single hit, getting lucky? Well, uh, this streamer who goes by Dino Singale, uh, or Dino, if I'm pronouncing this right, uh, huh. they did just that, but with every single boss in every single FromSoft game. Yes, that's right. They beat Bloodborne, Demon Souls, Sekiro, Elden Ring, and Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3 back to back without taking a single hit. Am I heard about this. Am I allowed to say, can I say that again just for the, the monumental feat that is? They beat Bloodborne, Demon Souls, Sekiro, Elden Ring, and Dark I just don't know how long it took them because, you know, it's, pe people who train for hitless speedruns, you know, in games are already. Man, this this probably was hot. Dark Souls one, two, and three. Well, back obviously to back it was hot. Without taking a single hit. This is called. But how long did it take him to get to this point? Called the God Run, and has only been done two times prior to this uh, by other streamers. Kotaku had a nice chat with Dino. If, if you want to check it out, we'll link that in the only description. Only two times. Uh, he wow. mentions Sekiro and Elden Ring in particular, kicking his ass. And if you played Sekiro, you know that's true. But after four months of Sekiro and Elden Ring putting him to work, he pulled it off. And for that, we think a round of applause is more than warranted. Not only would I never do that in my lifetime, I would never even think about doing that. So that's all to them. Next over at number four, we wanted to highlight Zezima. Uh, in the mainstream gaming oh, world, really not often discussed, but in the RuneScape world, they are an absolute celebrity. This is because Zezima is the highest ranked player in RuneScape uh, from around 2004 to 2007. They had been so aggressively at the top for so long that they became a celebrity, not only in the community, but within the game itself. I mean, true, everyone who had played RuneScape knows the, knows the word name Zezima. 
uh, reportedly people would follow around Zezima whenever they were playing. Like they rolled with a posse, a crowd, an entourage, just a, a crowd of people hounding them. Not only was he at the top of the high scores, but basically he was maxed out in everything. And for a lot of kids playing the game at the time, Zezima was like a legend. It got to the point where Zezima was such a big deal that Jagex, uh, the developers, would actually promote them on the social and, and score page when they came around. Apparently Zezima bowed out at a point from just trying to be the best, you know, the number one spot, Hello. but still remains pretty close on those charts. The name Zezima will probably live on in RuneScape forever, because legends <laughs> never die. Next over at number three, we need to highlight Flash. Now, we don't talk about esports very cool. often here at Game Ranks. It's not really our thing, but in terms of video game history, uh, Flash is significant because they're probably one of the biggest esports player of... Prudbot? Flash? I... I... Is that him? It's been a while since I have seen if that's him. Of all time, but not only that, like, w one of the first in the early days. No, it is, isn't it, right? In Korea, specifically, when StarCraft was yep. popping. Man, dude, are you kidding me? StarCraft's still pop pop uh, popping off in Korea, and it's understandable. Hell, three months ago, I, uh, I saw a competitive Brood War game. Bruh, Flash vs. Jadong? Good times, good times. Brood War is just just so good to watch and, uh, and the reason why by the way watching brood watch seems so cool is because it's chaos it is actual chaos zergling run buys everything feels unique it actually feels like a bunch of alien races are fighting i love brood watch competitive scene it's just so good it is brutal it is good it is amazing Zergling run buys where a base is getting taken out and nothing's happening because the ma uh, macro is just way too hard. It's great. Being off in the early world of esports. His competitive StarCraft 2 career only went from 2011 to 2015 when he retired, but long before Wait, that. He's back. I thought he was back or something. As a young player, he was absolutely sweeping things up with StarCraft Brood War. Like at 14, he scored his first big victory. Yeah, he was a prodigy. Then he switched to StarCraft 2, and StarCraft 2 is just like, come on. I mean, mm, Star watching StarCraft 2 competitive is just not the same. It's an, it doesn't even come close to how amazing Brood War competitive games are. In fact, by many, he is believed to be the greatest StarCraft Brood War player ever. Now, True. Flash is still out there in the gaming world as more of a broadcaster, but... For Flash number one, J-Dong number two. Competitive StarCraft fans, his name is in the history books. Now, down to number two, we need to talk about something called the A Button Challenge. According to Akukipedia.net, this was apparently a born Mario from thing? kids and people just trying to beat Super Mario 64 by pressing the A button as little as possible. It gets to the point where it's kind of like speed running, where players are doing weird maneuvers and weird manipulations and exploits in the game to do everything possible, almost break the game to avoid pressing the A button. It is absolutely an impressive thing. It's completely fascinating. There are a couple of mm. YouTube video essays out there worth watching. Just the, the degree of dedication and focus and, and weird obsession wow. this fun little meta game takes. Uh, player Pen and Coek 2012 is the one that's kind of the legend by most. That name comes up the most when you look up the A button challenge because of the videos they've made and the insane level of dedication towards this, uh, manipulating the game and figuring things out that nobody else has. So what, you press A and never release it, is that it? Including manipulating the game and uncovering and exploiting weird glitches that often take years and years of practice and beating their head against the game and making videos that take hours and hours. And one of the most interesting things was how they tackled Watch for Rolling Rocks, the infamous Super Mario 64 level uh, that is really infamous with the A button challenge. Now, really just some incredible stuff has come from this. It's hard to explain, but it is really impressive when you dive into it. And you know, going hard on the A button challenge has been impressive and not only Pan and Koek, but people have been whittling it down to, according to Wikipedia, a 120 star playthrough completed in as few as 13 A button presses. So the Pan and Koek 2012 for doing all these weird things with Mario 64 and also the people continuously trying to whittle down the A button challenge, you are legends.
Now down at number one, uh, considered by many one of the all-time great moments in uh, MMO or multiplayer game history, uh, it's the guy who committed regicide or uh, assassinated a, a royal person. Actually, it's Ultima Online. One player accidentally committed regicide uh, and killed Lord British. Lord British is the gaming alter ego of the video game developer, the legend Richard Garrio. Apparently in Ultima, like Lord British has always been a thing and they were always marked as unkillable. So the way the story goes, and this is a hard one to translate if you don't play Ultima. Accidental regicide in the video game. I mean, that's great. I'm online, or if you haven't been in that world, apparently the Lord British character showed up in Ultima Online during like a big beta test. It was like a beta stress test, and the whole thing was to have the king show up to the population as part of that stress test. It's kind of funny, it's kind of charming, uh, but there was this player known as Reigns who casted a fire spell on Lord British that killed him. This was actually not intentional. This was an error because like I said, typically this King character shows up and is marked as unkillable or is technically unkillable. Uh, but the way the stress test stuff was going down uh, when it bounced from server to server, apparently some of those restrictions were turned off and one player just clicked and oops, killed the king the legendary king like this whole ultima legend and an actual connection uh, to the real world creator an iconic character killed that's kind of funny that's kind of funny i i mean the best part is it's just an accident killed, assassinated regicide by accident so who did it by oops one stupid click it doesn't sound like a big deal but if you read accounts from people who were there or who were at least involved in that world this was freaking crazy, dude. This was a crazy big thing because Richard Garriott was considered untouchable. He was like the legend. Lord British was the legend. Lord British floats around still in various Ultima things, but that was the one time where they slipped up and he was able to be killed because anytime something That's is killable hilarious. in an MMO or a multiplayer game, someone's gonna do it. Someone's gonna- I mean, if, even if it's not killable, someone's gonna try and do it. It is what it is. Go for it. A funny whoopsie on all parts, but absolute legends all around. Just players in video game history books for good or bad. True. Well, anyway, that was that was an impressive list. That, that was game ranks. Top, top 10. Yeah, good stuff, good stuff. Anyway, this was Quizzer Sensei. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, and thought I think, and have a nice day. Bye-bye.